How are you today? Uh, a few announcements this morning. Uh, here's uh, in your bulletin, you'll find a report on social media update. How many of you are on Facebook? Okay. A little more than half, I think. Um, our Facebook numbers aren't doing that well. Uh, we need to put more non-video contact posts that people can interact with on our, uh, for comments, and, and I don't understand all this that I'm reading, uh, but Cliff does. And if you're on Facebook, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I don't know. Um, anyway, every, the report from Cliff is here, so I invite you to read that. Uh, we're having a short SPRC meeting after service. Uh, I, I don't expect it to last more than like 10 or 15 minutes, um, but anybody is welcome to, to stay for that if you want to find out more about SPRC. Uh, Phyllis Heinemann is having a birthday this Thursday, so uh, keep her in your prayers and please reach out to her and wish her a happy birthday. Birthday, Mary Lou and David Place are celebrating uh, an anniversary on next Saturday, the 15th. We need volunteers to help set up for our fellowship dinner this Friday, the 14th. There will be a concert today at Second Presbyterian Church at 2 p.m. Olivia Clavett, Claggett, a harpist, will be presenting. We have a trustee meeting uh, the Tuesday, the 11th. It's 6 p.m. here in the Narthex. You're invited to that. We're having a paint and cleanup day next Saturday uh, around 9.30, give or take. If you can't make it till 10 or even 11, I'd still invite you to come. Uh, we're going to do some things that we don't normally get done, cleaning the pews and doing some additional vacuuming, cleaning, invite you to that. Next Sunday is the last day to uh, uh, donate to Operation Spirit. And that is the Girl Scout effort to reach out to service members. So I, I would invite you to um, bring in things for that. The altars, the flowers on the altar this morning are um, from the Refuge, Refuge Can, Canyon Vet Office and Friends of Julie's uh, for Mike and Debbie and their loss of Sadie this week. And I want you to know that uh, I... That is a legitimate grief. A lot of people would look at that and say, well, it's only a dog. No, it's not a dog. No way is it just anything. And that's, my heart breaks. So um, I acknowledge the flowers and uh, please reach out to uh, Mike and Debbie. Any announcements I've missed? Jeff? Debbie, Cliff, Mary. Okay, so before our SPRC meeting, we're going to have a one-minute meeting of finance to determine when we can have a meeting. Okay? Yes. Oh, yes. We have a third Girl Scout troop that is going to be using Christian Endeavor as their home um, meeting place. I am really excited about that. The three Girl Scout troops, we could be the Girl Scout center for all of Newark or Licking County, and I'd be tickled to death. So uh, if you know of any other groups that would like to, to meet here, um, reach out to them, have them give me a call or Debbie and We'll work things out, but I am excited about that. Thank you. Uh, so please, let's stand and uh, join in our call to worship. These words are from Psalm 99. The Lord reigns. Nations tremble. He sits enthroned above heaven and earth. The Lord, it is exalted above all nations. Let everyone praise your great and awesome name, for you alone are holy. God is mighty. He loves justice and establishes equality. The Lord alone does what is right. 
The Lord answers all who call upon his holy name. He speaks from the clouds, and his people keep his commands. Amen. And let us sing with, uh, if you can't sing, if you sing like I do, and it's a joyful noise, then fine. Make it a loud and joyful noise to our Lord. Nearer, my God, to thee. Please be seated. You know, a lot of times when I'm working in the office, I'll have uh, music on in the background. Uh, sometimes there are music videos, and they're so growing up in the mostly in the 70s, if there was any growing up that occurred in my life, uh, I like to listen to music. Well, now that I'm playing those DVDs and, and videos and things like that, I'm learning that the words that I sang weren't anywhere close to what they actually were. If you're trying to sing these hymns and your eyes are like mine and you, you get it but you don't, don't worry about it because God sorts through it all. We have a special guest this morning. Do you recognize this young lady here coming in? Good morning. That's okay. How are you? So good to see you today. Welcome. What a great blessing. Oh, my goodness. Somebody tell, let's, this is Ann Perry, and she goes back just a year or two, I believe, but it's so good to see. I haven't seen you in ages, my goodness. It was a few minutes ago anyway, but it's so good to see you, Ann. Thank you. We have wonderful prayer concerns in front of us this morning, and Ann's picture is there on the top right. 
Um, Campbell is the infant, or I'm sorry, Cam Callahan is the infant on the bottom right. Callahan has been fighting uh, cancer, leukemia actually, I think, since birth but is now doing better. They're waiting to have a surgery that he's going to need, but is doing well. Um, actually, Kathy and family should be Amanda and family. Uh, what the boy on the left um, was killed in an automobile accident, so we grieved their loss. Phyllis and Craig are doing great. Phyllis and Craig, if you're watching, it's good to have you with us. Walter and Marge might be online as well, watching. Uh, both of those couples are shut-ins. Mary Lou and David Place are shut-in, and uh, I'm sorry to report that Ludi is still in hospice care, and we're praying for her. But what prayers, what praises are on your heart this morning that you would like lifted up? Todd? Todd? Okay, Todd has family members with health issues, and we want to lift them in prayer this week. Uh, Dorothy? Unspoken. You know, uh, I think this is, of all the prayers that we could lift up, I think unspoken are those prayers that God specializes in because they're coming from the depths of our heart, and we don't need to pray them, but God does. God hears and he feels those prayers. Yes, Betty? Comfort. Betty has a family member who is in need of great comfort, so we pray Lord's blessing upon her. Mike. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so my, Mike had two prayers. One is uh, Emma who is a granddaughter and is having digestive issues, um, swallowing and, and things like that. So we want to keep her lifted in prayer. She is on a, a special regimen right now, but we would ask for healing and a, a permanent solution. And then the loss of, uh, as I said, Sadie, uh, who they had Sadie for 10 years. And, and that that's a family member. That's companionship that is just there with you and, and he described Sadie and that um, she loved everybody. She even loved me. So, you know, that, that tells you what Sadie was like. Jeff? Okay. Yeah, Jeff had a birthday this la past week. I think he's 32, 31, something like that. A little lower, a little lower. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I just want to welcome you here. If you're here to worship today, I want you to just think as we go to God in prayer that God is hearing you. You don't need me. In your relationship with God, yes, I'm the one up here praying, I am the least important person in this equation. God is directing he is hearing your prayers personally. So I just ask you to go into that place right now where you feel God's presence. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning on a, a beautiful, bright Sunday morning, but, you know, there were days this week where it was dark and cloudy and gloomy, and, and Lord, we contend, if we're not careful, we can have that be our mood. We can get caught up in that and just 
let it sour our whole day. It robs our joy and our disposition. And we do want to enjoy your creation and enjoy life. So, Lord, these prayer concerns that we lift, the, the unspoken prayers, the health issues, the prayers for comfort, Lord, we invite you into that holy space in our lives where you can work within us and through us. Lord, we need your help. There's so much grief and agony. Uh, there's just beginning the, the cleanup in Florida and other places that were ravaged by Hurricane Ian and the hurricane, I believe it was Fiona before that. Lord, we're still battling wildfires out west and there are plenty of issues of war going on this world of ours that we don't understand. There is violence all around us. There is homelessness and hunger and a lack of safe drinking water. So, Lord, we ask your presence to bring healing and fulfillment to this earth and to our lives. Use us as instruments that can lift people in prayer that, but can also provide healing and solution for whatever situation they're in. Lord, we love you so much, and we can be so fickle, but Lord, you are solid. You are our foundation, and we trust in you. We appreciate the love that you have for us, a never-ending, unrivaled, perfect love. Lord, hear us now as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And I want to I make another announcement, something that you won't find in the bulletin. If you are uh, interested in baptism, or you're interested in becoming a member of this church, if you would like to uh, take some kind of a uh, like a confirmation class, if you would like to transfer your membership, anything like that, uh, just contact Debbie or myself, and we'll see to it, make sure that happens. Uh, I typically pick a couple of Sundays throughout the year when we can do that, but you don't have to wait for that occasion. Um, just reach out, and we'll, we'll, we'll make that happen, okay? We'll work out a, a good date for you. At this time, I would invite you to stand for our doxology. Lord, you have poured out the storehouse of heaven and you have gifted us. Please accept our gifts of tithe and offering. Multiply them, anoint them for your purpose and pleasure. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. So one of the questions in our Bible study over the past couple of weeks has been, uh, what, do you, what is your favorite Daniel story? And I hate to do this because I like to pinpoint one and I don't like to be vague. I, I'd have to say all of them. You know, I love how Daniel could not only interpret another person's dream accurately the way God intended that vision, but even told the person what their dream was. Annette and I have been married for over 35 years, and 
we'll wake up in the morning and we'll say, man, I had the craziest dream last night. And it's like, okay, what did you dream? And it's, it's from people that don't go together, like factory work and church and another group over here in a situation that none of them have in common and something really off the wall. And then she'll explain hers to me, and it's like, I, I have no idea where that came from. Can you imagine trying to get in somebody's head and say, well, this is what you dreamed? Really? How could you do that? And then to interpret that dream. I, uh, today we're going to talk about Daniel and the lion's den. We've, we've talked about, um, what is it? Now, the, the, well, the fi- yeah, we've got the fiery furnace. That's the story I'm going for, but I'm trying to remember the first name because I get the others, They, f- but I have to do them in order. Shadrach. Shadrach, that's the one. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I can get Meshach and Abednego, but I can't do it if I don't have Shadrach in there. I love the story of the fiery furnace. Can you imagine being put into a situation where God is not he's got you know God's not out here saving them out of the furnace God was in the furnace saving them within their troubles you've got Daniel and lion's den I this story is so cool we're gonna I've got a picture I want to share with you here in a little bit um but can you imagine being thrown in a den of hungry hungry lions Daniel is such a Here's the other thing that I, I, I can't hardly believe. If you look at Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you look at Noah, um, David, you look at any of those Old Testament stories, what do they all have in common? They all messed up somewhere. I mean, David looked down onto a rooftop he shouldn't have been looking down on. Um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob lied, and they were dysfunctional with their family. Daniel. You know, there is nothing in the Bible where Daniel ever messed up. Now, come on, Daniel. You wrote your own book. I know you messed up somehow, someplace in there. That's our story, though. If we were to write our story, we wouldn't necessarily write about places we'd messed up. We all have. It's something that we all have in common. So I want to Extend an invitation this week to think about it as you go about your troubles or go about your life. If you're in trouble somewhere, if your situation isn't great, God's right there in it with you. If you're facing hungry lions, God's there with you. And we're going to reach out. We're going to step in. Not that we can be God, but we're going to step out and reach out to others. And we're going to be the hands and feet of God when others are in crisis situations, okay? That's our homework for the week. Let's pray. Lord, you inspire men like Daniel to serve. You inspired uh, Deborah the judge and all sorts of people. They were nobodies, absolutely nobodies. There was nothing special about them until you got involved in their life and you made them something special and that's what you do for us lord you make us something special lord as we go about our work the work week whatever we're doing may we always reach out to others may we seek you and find you in them and in all situations in jesus name amen So again, this is a condensation of the story. This is Daniel 6, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 22. Now, King Darius appointed satraps to rule the kingdom and administrators to rule over them. One was Daniel. Now, Daniel so distinguished himself that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. The other officials were jealous. So they said, <clears throat> so they said O King Darius... Issue a decree that anyone who prays to any god or man during the next 30 days, except to you, 
shall be thrown into the lion's den. Put it in writing so it cannot be altered. And Daniel went home and he prayed, giving thanks to his God as he had always done. When they found Daniel praying to God, they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the laws of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. Then they said, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, still prays three times a day to his God. And when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed and was determined to rescue Daniel, but could not. So the king gave the order and threw Daniel into the lion's den. And then the king said to Daniel, May your God whom you serve continually rescue you. A stone was placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation could not change. The king spent the night without eating and without any entertainment, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. And when he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done anything wrong before you. The word of God for the people of God. We're going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of Where He Leads Me. I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear my Savior calling, take thy cross and follow, follow me, where he leads me I will follow, where he leads me I will follow, where he leads me I will follow I'll go with him with him all the way I'll go with him through the judgment I'll go with him through the judgment I'll go with him through the judgment I'll go with him with him all the way where he leads me on where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. He will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory. He will give me grace and glory. And go with me, with me all the way. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him all the way. I want to ask you a question this morning. How's your prayer life? Parents took their two kids to Sunday service one week, and it was a special prayer service. And they were in there, and they were praying. And on the way out, the young boy asked his sister, what did you pray for? And she said, well, I prayed for Grandma, and I, I prayed to get good grades in school. What did you pray for? He said, well, I'm not telling but if there's a pony out there, it's mine. 
Let's pray. Lord, as we seek your face and focus on you, may we find you. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts would be pleasing to you. Amen. Take a look at this painting of Daniel. I want you to notice every detail that you can, because we're going to come back to it later. But just take a few seconds, and as I start into the sermon, I want you to focus on this painting and think about the details. A young man was accused of molesting his boss's wife, even though he had done no wrong. But the man refused to slander her, but he stuck by his story. He said, I did not do this for which I'm accused. The judge hearing the case threw him in jail anyway. Now this particular case is Joseph in the Old Testament. But ever since then, and probably before, stories like this happen. They happen in courtrooms still today all around the world. Some of the men are guilty, and some aren't. Have you ever been wrongly accused of doing something immoral and been innocent? Something illegal, and yet you didn't do it? I'm guessing that yes, everyone here has been falsely accused at one time or another. And that's Daniel in this morning's situation. Daniel did nothing wrong. So we're all in good company. I mean, think about it. Abel did nothing wrong. He worshiped God in the best way he could. And Cain, his brother, slayed him. Moses' correct path took Moses into disagreement with the Israelite leaders. Stephen, in the New Testament, served widows and orphans faithfully. Yet for his faith, He was stoned to death. Paul was imprisoned and was killed for his faith. See, life isn't fair. Justice is not always served. So what do we what do we do? Do we quit? We just quit life? Do we turn to evil ourselves? Do we want to even the score? Or do we stand strong in our faith regardless of the outcome? I'm telling you right now that my first answer when I'm in that situation, not as I think about it later, but my first thought is one of getting even or getting ahead. It's what I want to do. That's my initial reaction. I want First of all, I want to be proven right, but then I want to pay that other person back. And I think that's normal. Now, acting on it is different. Of course, Scripture tells us if we even think it, we're guilty. So we really do need to be careful. I'm still waiting for that little red sports car out on 37 to get pulled over in front of me. But what happened I got a ticket for speeding on my way back from vacation in New York. I want to see the person with that overloaded grocery cart in the 10 items or less checkout line have to get in another line. But it never happens. I want the person that invented telemarketing and robocalls to be inundated with inundated with spam, mail, and phone calls at all hours of the night. I would love that. I don't know why good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. But let's take a a deeper look at Daniel and his situation. When people are mean, or because people are mean, what are we supposed to do? supposed to pray. The satraps and the other officials knew they could never catch Daniel in wrongdoing. No, Daniel wasn't perfect. I'm, I'm certain of that. But it, whatever it was that he had done wrong probably wasn't obvious. So what did they do? They decided to go to my first choice, which is let's 
Let's get this Daniel. Let's just get him out of here. So they set him up. They started by feeding Darius' ego. They convinced him to build a statue to his glory and come up with this ludicrous rule that you couldn't pray or worship anybody else. And according to Scripture, the way the law of the Medes and Persian, it, once a king made an edict, it could not be countered. So Darius was powerless to save Daniel. So what does Daniel do? Two things, and he does them very well. In Daniel 6, verses 10 and 11, it says that three times a day he got down on his knees and he prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Three times a day, Daniel was consistent in his prayer. Nothing changed. And we're going to learn later that Daniel prayed through good times and bad. Would we be content God being with us? So if we're going through a trauma or a tragedy in life, are we okay knowing that God's with us? Situation may not change, but God's with us. I'm going to speak for myself. No, I'm not content with that. I want God to fix it. I want my problem to disappear. I want that bluebird of happiness with me. I appreciate God being with me, but I want blue skies. I don't want storms of life. Does that describe anyone? I mean, do you feel like that? I mean, I doubt anybody wakes up this in the morning and says, man, I hope I got a flat tire today. No, we want the good things in life. I want to feel fantastic in victory. I don't want to be crushed under persecution or sickness or disease or grief. If we're playing dodgeball, I don't want to get hit. I want to do the hitting. I do like the hymns. A couple of my favorite hymns, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, Precious Lord, Take My Hand and Stand By Me. I love those old favorites but they're not what I want when I'm facing persecution. No. I want blessed assurance, and I want victory in Jesus. Those are the hymns I want. But God is with us through persecution. And it's not always what we want to hear, though. We want persecution to go away. Nobody wants to face that. We have trials at work and and home life situations sometimes, illness, loss of loved ones. We want victory in Jesus, and we want it now. In Daniel's prayer life, Daniel never prays for his personal victory. The closest we come is in Daniel chapter 9 when he prays that God would forgive Israel of their sins that he would grant mercy to the people of Israel. He, and he prayed that God would be glorified in that. That's not a selfish prayer. Wouldn't it be great if in life people didn't try to uh, get ahead by stabbing us in the back or climbing all over us on the ladder of promotions? And it happens. I mean, that, that stuff happens. It happens in politics. It happens in schools, in factories, in offices. It happens in churches. The fact is that bad behavior exists, well, only in one place where people are. Bad behavior exists wherever people are gathered. We need to pray that God's will shall be accomplished, that he's always with us, and that he's glorified. That's our best answer. So there's something else going on, though, that I want you to look at. So, Robert, can we go back to that painting? And, and mandatory group participation, uh, you don't need to raise your hand. Just Is there anything that you notice in this painting? Just holler it out. Bones on the floor. There's a window. Other details. Thank you. I'm in a lion's den. Where am I going to focus my eyes? I am looking at lions 
I'm looking for a rock, a stick, or hopefully a ladder because I want to get out. Daniel is looking up to heaven. Daniel gets it. If you're like me, you might have one eye on the heavens, but the other eye is looking at those lions. It'd be like me stepping in the boxing ring with Muhammad Ali. He may be chasing me, but he's going to have to catch me. And that's the way it is with the lions. They're going to eat me, but they're going to run. They're going to have to run to get me. I'm not standing still. Daniel's focus is on the light. Where do we focus? What is the atmosphere in the room where we are? Are we praying? Are we searching for God and saying, God, I pray that you would rescue me, but if that's not in your will, I'm okay with it because I trust that you're here with me. And I did not say that that was easy. No. In this lion's den, fiery furnace, praying to God. But that's what we need to do. That's where our focus needs to be. And I, I want you to know, when I, so when I ask you how your prayer life is, think to yourself, not aloud, but think to yourself, what kind of a grade do you give yourself? Because I will never give myself better than a C. I, I just don't think I pray often enough. I don't think that I pray deeply enough. I pray. My prayers tend to be more of the breath prayers. Why do we do more breath prayers than we do sit down, let's sit down and talk to God and, and let's listen for God? Because we, we're busy. We don't, we don't take time. We have the creator of the entire universe on speed dial. And we say, hey, God, got to go, but uh, can you? Thanks. And then we don't wait for an answer. We just let God sort it out. Do we look to heaven to see God's answer? Daniel didn't look for Darius to remove him from the lion's den. He didn't complain that, hey, Darius, oh, buddy, they set me up. None of that. He didn't focus on the, lion, on the lions. He focused on God. Years after this writing, David said, I look to the heavens. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You see, when David focused on God, he conquered Goliath. When he focused on the rooftop, he sinned. When Peter focused on Jesus, what did he do? He walked on water. But when he took his eyes away, he nearly drowned. Athletes focus on an objective. Musicians on their score. Actors focus on their lines. Contractors focus on blueprints. Where are our eyes focused today? We talk about war in the world and battling disease and heartache and, and things. But what are we focused on? Do we take time to focus on the light? Because if they're not on Christ, we're focused on the wrong thing. I'm of the opinion that Daniel was a righteous man. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And that's the NIV translation. The uh, message translation says, make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. The prayer of a, of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. And, and I like the New King James. New King James is a fun one for me to read. I like the kind of the poetry of it. It's for me personally. 
It says, confess your trespasses to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. See, our prayers like Daniel's and David's are powerful. They're effective. And those prayers are a force to be reckoned with. And they avail much. Now, I'm not questioning anyone's righteousness here because we're all equal in our righteousness. We're all made righteous by what Jesus Christ has done and is doing in our lives. But are we taking advantage of having the Lord our Savior, the maker of heaven and earth, recipient of our prayers? I don't think we, we do. I don't think we take advantage of that. I think we should. Do we pray without ceasing in good times and bad? Do we pray with confidence knowing that God hears us and wants to bless us? Do we remember to pray to God in thanksgiving for all we've received? I mean, if nothing else, look at the endless mercies. Every, do, every day his mercy is new. And in Christ, all of our sins are covered. Do we pray for our enemies? Because this one's hard. Do we pray for the Taliban? Do we pray for politicians, Democrats, and Republicans equally? Do we pray for the drug abuser the drug pusher, and the drug-dependent person? Do we pray for peace for priest, rabbi, and pastor? I don't for a second believe that Daniel was perfect. He was found innocent in the eyes of God, though, because there was no guile in him. Daniel was one of those what-you-see-is-what-you-get guys. He had great integrity, but he, and he regularly prayed and confessed his sins. If he confessed his sins, we know he wasn't perfect. The fervent prayers of a righteous man avail much. You see, God didn't save Daniel from the lion's den. He saved Daniel within the lion's den. I just think sometimes we lose our focus. I think too often we can look in the face of the lions and we need to be looking on the face of Christ. I do believe that sometimes, you know, we need to confront our issues. We need to come to them face to face. We need to deal with them because many times there are situations that we ourselves created. But where should our focus be? Focus needs to be on Christ. Christ. See, we draw our strength from the awesome power of Christ, and in him we're victorious. We can focus on the size of our problem, or we can focus on the awesomeness of God. We are called to pray in season and out, during good times and bad, and without ceasing. Society, on the other hand, would have us look at Abel and most and Joseph and Moses and Stephen and Paul and all those others and say that their prayers weren't all that effective. And I would counter that God answered prayer in each and every situation and their righteous faith was rewarded. Depends on what our focus is on. Where do we focus God's grace and mercy reaches us wherever we are. There's no limit to the reach of God's mercy and his grace. And it's an endless supply always there for us. And in him, we are made perfectly righteous and we have salvation. Amen.
I want to invite you to stand for our closing hymn, How Great Thou Art. And let's, let's really praise God with our singing.
when I, Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God, how great thou art. That's when we focus on him. So I want to share some prayers with you. These are special prayers from very, very special people. Dear God, please don't let it rain on Sunday. The first ball I hit will be for you. Dear God, if you watch me in church on Sunday, I'll show you my new shoes. Dear God, please forgive me for hiding my sister's favorite doll, and please don't tell her where it is. Dear God, I need you to make my mom not allergic to cats. I want a cat, and I really don't want to ask my mom to move out. (laughs) Dear God, I saw my big brother walking out of the shower on accident. Can you erase that from my brain? (laughs) Dear God, when will my sister stop being annoying? I'm down to my last patience. Dear God, I promise to never say those words again at least until my next shots. (laughs) The prayers of a righteous person avail much. This week, we have the opportunity to focus on God and to pray to him and and just see what kind of thing he's got planned for us because I know it's going to be an exciting ride. I picture myself when I'm closest to God, when I am closest to God, and I'm not there all the time, but I try. But on my most close moment with God, we're on a tandem bike. I'm on the back. He's on the front. We're going down a mountain. He's got his hands off of the handlebars, feet out like this, and we're doing 50 mile an hour, and he's screaming, isn't this fun? No, what do I want? I want the front seat. I want the handlebars. I want the pedals. I want the brakes. I want all of that. This week, let's just trust in God. We're going to let him guide us. Reach out. Um, Phyllis is having a birthday. Um, uh, Mary Lou and David, an anniversary. Uh, Jeff just had a birthday. We've got Ann here this morning, and we're so excited you're here. Um, reach out to somebody this week and make their day special. And you do that when you focus on Christ and serve them. Have a blessed week. Amen. Amen.